I recently tried out this paper and I thought you'd be interested to know what I think of it. I've got two panda paintings to show you today. I painted this one first because it takes a little while to get used to a new paper and because this was a fairly quick painting, I painted a second one so that I could give you my honest opinion. I often get asked to recommend watercolour paper, but I rarely venture away from Arche or Fabriano Artistico. I'm happy with both of those papers and I'm used to painting on them, so I rarely buy any others. But a few weeks ago I was sent some Stonehenge aqua paper to try. This paper is made in the US by Legion paper. It's 100% cotton, acid-free paper. The weight is 300 GSM or 140 pound and I used the cold press paper. I was sent a 9 by 12 inches block to try. The block has gummed sides so you can paint directly onto it and then remove it after the painting is finished and dry. I took it off the block and I stretched the paper first because I work on paper that's fairly wet and I never seem to have much success with blocks. They always seem to buckle and pucker for me and I prefer to paint on paper that's completely flat. Overall, I was quite happy with the paper. The paint went on easily. There was nothing that really bothered me when I was using it. The washes were even. It didn't dry too quickly, nor did the water and paint sit on top for too long, which was good. I found it easy to lift the pigment after it had dried, which is great when you want to create some highlights. One problem I found with it is that it's quite fragile in comparison to ash paper. I used washi tape around the edges to create a white border. Washi tape is low tack, so it's not meant to damage the paper. Even though I took the tape off gently, it still took a bit of paper with it. I also found that when I used my eraser on the dry paper, the paper lifted slightly and came away in the area where I rubbed. I also used a small amount of masking fluid on the second panda and when I removed it the paper was slightly discoloured where the masking fluid had been. I wondered if I had done something to the paper by stretching it first. So to test that out I put some washi tape on the block and I left it on for about an hour and when I gently peeled it off it took a bit of the paper with it. I also put some masking fluid on the edge and when I removed that I could see that the paper had yellowed slightly. So my advice is if you plan on using masking fluid on your painting I'd stay away from Stonehenge Aqua. So those were two of the problems I found with it but other than that it's quite good to paint on. The reference photos I used both came from Pixabay. The first panda was taken by Nick115 and the second panda was taken by Dim Howe. To begin, I mixed some grey with French ultramarine and burnt sienna. This is burnt sienna. I mix the two together until I get a colour that I'm happy with. They don't have to be mixed perfectly either. It's better if they separate slightly on the paper. It makes the painting more interesting. Then I got my two inch flat brush and some clean water and I painted the water all over the paper. I'm going to work wet on wet because when I put the paint on there I want it to bleed and gently move over the paper giving me soft fuzzy edges around the outside edge of the panda. I'll use this big brush to put the paint on because I don't want to fuss. I just want to get it on there as quickly as I can. I paint the grey all over, even over the eyes. Down onto the body. I keep the paint colour fairly pale because I'm actually painting white fur here so I don't want it to be a dark colour. And then I get a bit more paint and I use my number 8 brush this time. Number 8 round brush. 
and I paint on the areas that are around the snout to try to bring the snout out more. Just on the wet paper, nice and loose. So far, so good. Quite happy with it. It's accepting the paint well. And the paper doesn't seem to be drying too quickly, so that's a good thing. I had some time to mix some black from Burnt Sienna and French Ultramarine. And I haven't re-wet the paper. It's still wet from that first wetting. I've got my mop brush here. I've separated the bristles so that it gives me a shaggy look to the strokes that I'm making. And I'm painting that black onto the wet paper still. It's not as wet as it was. It's just damp now. I painted in the other ear and the other eye. Now I'm doing this one on the damp paper. Just flicking the brush to create that shaggy look. At that point it was too dry to continue on. So I dried it off completely with my hair dryer. Now I'm re-wetting the paper with some clean water. I want to paint the body area. I use my big flat brush to get the paint on there as quickly as I can. Using the black mixture, it's burnt sienna and French ultramarine mixed together. And then as I took it closer to the head, I switched to my mop brush. I'm still using black, but I've got a bit more pigment now. Spread the paint out. Because I wet the head as well, the black bleeds into it, giving me those soft edges where the black meets the grey fur on the neckline. Then when it was starting to dry, I dropped in a bit of water to create some watercolour blooms down the bottom there. That'll create a bit of texture when it dries. I painted in the mouth with some grey. I did that on the dry paper. Then I mixed a bit of French ultramarine into burnt sienna to create a dark brown and I used that on the edges there. I softened paint edges with my damp brush and then I switched to a smaller brush to add a bit more detail. Down here I re-wet the paper and I started to darken some of the black areas. I found that the paint didn't lift off when I re-wet it, which was good. I was a bit concerned that it was going to lift off and smear all over the background, but it didn't seem to do that. Here I'm using that mop brush to paint some flicks up into the white area. I painted in the eyes and then I painted a wash of grey over the top of the nose. I allowed that to dry. I painted in the nostrils then on the dry paper. And here I'm painting in the dark areas around the nostrils. I'm doing that on dry paper, but then I use my damp brush to soften the edges of the paint marks. Here I'm softening an edge. Then I get a bit more paint and I paint that over the top. Just to deepen the colour. I don't like to go too dark too quick. I tend to sneak up on my darks. I think I fear going too dark too quickly in case I get the shape of something wrong. Here I've wet the nose with some water and I'm painting some black paint around the edge of it. I want the paint to bleed back over the nose. And then I wet the outside area around the nose on the white fur and I painted some grey paint there as well. A little bit of black on the mouth on dry paper. And then I wet this area here with water and I use the brown there. So far I was really happy with the paper. It wasn't giving me any trouble at all. I re-wet that area up there where the ear is and I put a bit more paint up there to deepen the colour slightly. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to do that. I was hoping that I'd get dark enough on the first layer, but I didn't, so I had to give it a second layer. 
I mixed some French ultramarine with transparent yellow and I painted in the leaves on dry paper with my number eight brush. Really simple, I didn't want to fuss with these. While that paint was wet, I charged in some more yellow and I mixed a pale brown from burnt sienna and French ultramarine and painted in the little branches. Right at the end, I got one of my light blue coloured pencils out and I drew a few highlights over the top of the nose. This is a Prisma colour pencil. And there's the first panda study finished. I painted the first panda without any problems that I could find. So then I decided to paint a second panda to give myself some more experience with the paper and so that I could have some more information to share with you. With the second one, that's when I discovered that the paper was quite fragile. So you'll get to see that now. With the second panda, I wet the paper again all over and I used the grey mixture again. This is a mix of French ultramarine and burnt sienna and I painted it onto the wet paper. Because the background is wet as well as the panda, the paint bleeds into the background and gives me those fuzzy edges. I'm painting white fur here, so I'll leave some of the white of the paper showing and I also make sure that the colour isn't too dark. I talked about that in a recent video where I was painting the white rosebuds in different colours. I could see a few warm areas on the white fur, so for that I used some burnt sienna. Again, fairly pale. That will dry and it will be quite light when it dries. While that was wet, I painted some black onto the ears. I got my mop brush again and I separated the bristles. It gave me those little spiky lines. You can see the paper's still damp, it's giving me those soft edges. I went as far as I could with that brush and then I switched to my other round brush and I tidied it up a bit. And I painted in the other ear the same way. I wanted a jagged fuzzy line where the black fur met the white fur. So here I've got my mop brush again, all the bristles are separated and I'm painting some black on there. The main thing I'm looking at at the moment is that edge where the black fur touches the white fur. I'm not worried about what's happening underneath. I'll fix that up in a minute. I've got to move fairly quickly because the paper's starting to dry. So that's when I come in with my other brush and I tidy up that bottom section. And then I can fill the paint in fairly quickly with my large brush. I added a bit more water to the legs because they were quite dry and I took the paint down further. And this is still a mixture of French ultramarine and burnt sienna and sometimes it starts to separate on the paper and I quite like that when it does that. Some people tend to panic when the paint colours start to separate on the paper but I think that makes the painting look more interesting. Here I'm painting the area around the eye with my mop brush on dry paper, still using the black that I mixed from French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. I did the same thing here with the mop brush. I separated the bristles to create those little jagged edges there. I painted a second layer of black over my first layer here on the ears. My first layer wasn't dark enough again. Then I used my damp brush to soften away that edge. I needed to paint in that back leg and there were some leaves in front. So here's where I painted on some masking fluid onto the dry paper. This is Daniel Smith masking fluid that I'm using. I left that to dry and when it was dry I wet the paper again because I wanted to paint in that back leg and I wanted the leg to have soft edges. 
So I got my black paint, put the paint on, allowed the paint to drift, darkened in that area there on the wet paper. A waterline started to appear. I talked about those in my video a few weeks ago. And I cleaned up the water lines everywhere. That tends to happen on no matter what paper you're using. A bit more black paint. It's still wet. And the paper stayed wet enough for me to work on for a decent amount of time. It didn't dry too quickly. I left that to dry. I darkened the fur around the eye, painted the eyes in. Now I'm painting in the nose on dry paper. And then I darkened the area inside the mouth. Just on dry paper again. And then I soften edges with my damp brush. This is a number two brush that I'm using. Got a bit of grey, painted some little whiskers. And then when everything was dry, I took my rubber cement pickup tool and I took the masking fluid off. And this is where I found that the paper was quite fragile and it also slightly discoloured with that masking fluid. So that's something to watch with it. I think you can see just here that it's slightly yellowed and it's also damaged from the rubbing. Here I'm using my eraser and it started to lift a little bit of the paper off. I could see that it was nowhere near as tough as the ash paper. After I did that I drew the leaves back in. I have made a full length tutorial of the first panda for my Patreon site. In the tutorial I walk you through the entire painting. It's not easy but it's not as difficult as you may think because I explain everything as I go, even mistakes that I make. And then you can paint along with me. I have a library of about 140 full length tutorials that you can work your way through. So I hope you'll join us there if you want to learn more about painting in watercolour. I found the paint lifted quite easily once it was dry. Here I've got my eradicator brush. It's damp with water and the paper's dry. Just taking off a bit of paint so that it looks like there's a stick there. So that was quite easy to remove. After I did that, I painted in the leaves on the dry paper, the same way I did on the other panda. On this one, I wet the side of the head and I got some burnt sienna. I painted that on the wet paper. That added a bit of warmth. A bit more black in the ears as well. Here's where I carefully took the washi tape off and you can see how it's tearing the paper. It's a little bits of paper on the tape. It wasn't anything too bad, but I did notice that it wasn't as tough as ash paper. And there's that one finished. So there they are together. Overall, I was quite happy with both of them. As I mentioned, overall Stonehenge Aqua is not a bad paper to use. It was quite pleasant to paint on and I'm happy with the finished paintings. Even though it's the first time I've used it, I didn't struggle with it at all. I'll use this paper to practice on and paint my studies and it's one that I'll recommend to people who are just starting out with watercolour. I hope this was useful to you. As always, thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe because I'll be back next week with a new video for you. I recently tried out this paper, this one, this, this one. I often get asked to recommend watercolour paper. I feel like my hair's sticking up. Um, 
my hair's in my eyes. But I really, oh, that was awful. I was sent a nine by 12 inches block to try, or should it be nine by 12 inch? I was sent a nine by 12 inches block to try. The block has gummed size, so I did it again. It's got gummed sides. They usually seem to bucker and puckle, puckle, no. I was sent a nine inch, no, I did it again. I have a library of about 140 full length tutorials. Stonehenge An Anqua, Aqua. Even though it's the first time I've used it, I didn't, str this is going too fast, so I can't go pop. <laughs>